Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today I'm going to be bringing you some of those smaller fantasy news stories that might have flown under your radar that I'm pretty excited for still, and then broadening on out into that wider entertainment fantasy news uh, coverage that you all either love or hate. There's kind of a two-way street there for my audience, but I'm kind of interested in all the stories here today. But before we get into any of that, I interviewed on Friday Christopher Paolini for the channel. It's one of my favorite interviews I've ever done. He is so knowledgeable about the genre. And part two of that interview is now available on his channel. If you'd like to check that on out as well, links, of course, right there in that description down below. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to the news. First up, we had a rather interesting sneak peek into the upcoming Rebecca Roanhorse novel, Black Sun. And you know I loved it because it included maps. I'm a map guy, it's got maps, and they're not like your typical fantasy maps. These ones had some like outside the box appeal. We got some peninsulas, some city maps, not just, you know, the west coast of a continent. So I definitely spent probably a little bit too much time looking at these because I have a literal obsession with maps just outside the framing on this camera. So many maps. I think I have eight in here. Eight? Yeah, eight maps. If you didn't know already, this book is apparently going to be inspired by Native American cultures pre-European colonization. So you know how I've been shouting out into the void like I need more non-just European fantasy in my life because I think the genre has a lot more potential than kind of being constrained there. That's why this one's getting higher and higher in my TBR. One, it's not a typical fantasy setting as we usually see here, and two, Maps. It's got maps. I like the maps. I never said it's not easy to get my attention. <laughs> and in a rather huge piece of news here, at least in my opinion, N.K. Jimson tweeted out that every single one of her novels has had the TV slash film rights purchased, and she can't say anything more than that, which is such a tease, N.K. Jimson. Oh man, I would love to see so much of her work adapted. Broken Earth especially, Hells yes. So this is rather like just spectacular to hear because of course there are a lot of fantasy IPs being bought up, but I am just kind of partial to Jimson's work as well because I think she has a very distinct voice as an author. I don't think anyone can read Broken Earth and not say that. So it'll be interesting to see how Hollywood can uh, work with her material. And let me know in the comments down below, what of N.K. Jimson's uh, bibliography would you most like to see adapted? I think we're gonna see a lot of people, of course, say Broken Earth, but I can see the appeal of others as well. I've yet to uh, read her latest. I really want to, it's on my TBR, so don't worry, I will be getting to that eventually. It'll happen, I'm sure. Just know that eventually for me can mean years because it's books and it takes a while to get through them all. And USA Today dropped an exclusive announcement involving the meme icon Keanu Reeves. You know him from The Matrix, the upcoming Cyberpunk 2077, and oh, so much more. Apparently Keanu Reeves has actually been involved in writing a comic book. No, he's not content just being an amazing actor and leading the John Wick franchise. He's also writing, apparently. And this upcoming series with him involved is called Berserker. And it's about a man who's 80,000 years old, the son of a god of war, who's been fighting through the ages. Driven by his compulsion to violence he inherited from his father, battling with the pathos of man. That's a hell of a pitch that's right here on the website. I'm all about it. It'll be illustrated by Alessandro Vitti, and the look of the main character is, of course, inspired by Keanu Reeves himself. If you have the Chosen One involved, why not go with the Chosen One for a look? Of course, there's also probably the market appeal of, like, if this does get adapted and you have an 80,000-year-old uh, immortal going around causing violence, who better to play that than the immortal Keanu Reeves who's had a career of... That, that's seriously one hell of a pitch though. And this will start being released in October 7th. And if you'd like, of course, to see more about this, go ahead and check out that link in the description. Now, I'm just a fan of marketing. So I'm gonna cover this next story because I just think it's a pretty neat marketing tactic that's certainly accomplished its desired goal. And that's for the upcoming Green Knight. We've seen this like adaptation in the works for a while for Green Knight, but now they seem to be putting out, in addition to that, a board game and the commercial for it is like heavily 80s, like shot 
like this. Like it is an 80s advertisement, which has a lot of people talking. Like, is there showing that there's gonna be the appeal of everything they're doing here? Or is this just like kind of a fun gimmick to get attention? All kinds of stuff. And if you're interested in marketing, this is just a cool example of how small creative decisions that just show you're putting in effort, working outside the box, can really accomplish some goals. Uh, I think it was an effective ad. It also holds back a lot. You don't gain a lot of information from it. So it also has that appeal of almost like, oh, we're doing something, but you don't know. I enjoy things like that. Not from like a, oh, I don't see through it. I do, but I'm still just willing to let it have the intended effect on me because why not let myself get excited for some board game here? Are you a Good Omens fan by chance? Happen to like the book, the show, the author Neil Gaiman, the author Terry Pratchett? Well, if any of that's true, I'm probably gonna make your day a little little bit better here because Neil Gaiman sat down in an interview and confirmed that it's likely to happen to have some additional Good Omens adaptations uh, in the works in the future because his exact words here were pretty much that everyone involved is down for that. With COVID going on, it's gonna be hard to get momentum going, but he doesn't see why we wouldn't see more Good Omens in the future. It was well received critically and by audiences, had a decent level of success. And with that much just, oh yeah, let's do this some more. I don't see personally why this wouldn't happen. The exact words were, I think the possibility of making good more omens is pretty good. It's not like anybody doesn't want to make more good omens. And then he just goes on to say like, but you know, COVID, so it won't be for a while. But that's great. I didn't love the Good Omens show. I thought it was fine. I didn't hate it. I just thought it was a good adaptation and didn't have many more thoughts beyond that. But I'm also just kind of genuinely excited to see more because as I've said before, I'd, if other people like things and they get what they want, I just like buy second hand go, yay. In less happy news, because I have to push back against the online crowds a bit, it's been confirmed by Rebecca Ferguson herself that Dune is undergoing reshoots. As soon as this came out, of course, you have the wave of people on Twitter and headlines phrased in a certain way to make this seem like it's a sign that Dune is going to be awful. No. No, 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 no. Okay, anytime someone tells you that because reshoots are happening, something is guaranteed to be bad, the only thing you should take away from them saying that is they don't know what they're talking about. Because reshoots happen all of the time in Hollywood. Granted, they're not a great sign, but many, many amazing films are reshot. It just doesn't make headlines all the time, and especially if the movie turns out to be good, people forget about that. So just hearing like, oh, there's reshoots for Dune, and then going, it's gonna be bad. You're just telling me you don't know what you're talking about. Because reshoots happen for a ridiculously high percentage of films. But Daniel, then why do people constantly now all of a sudden care about reshoots? Because websites have learned that if they just like put out there, oh no, there's reshoots happening. People are going to click on that headline because they want to see like, oh, the project's falling apart because we all have that thing in our head where we want to see stuff crash and burn. So reshoots are now made to seem like a big deal for big projects because headline driven companies and websites know if they bring it up and make it seem like it's a big deal, they'll get your attention. So I'm just trying to help dampen that, put my my dampening wet cloth of factual knowledge down to get you in the know that it's not that big a deal if there's reshoots going on. I mean, heck, you probably already forgot all the headlines that were coming out about Infinity Wars reshoots, right? There were a ton of them when that movie was in production and, and people were going wild saying Infinity War was gonna be this awful mess and disaster. Well, it wasn't, so. You know, there's that. <laughs> but this is also not me guaranteeing it's gonna be good. It's just null evidence. It doesn't mean one way or the other a whole lot. And now transitioning to a story where I don't exactly know what I'm talking about, but I wanna still bring it up because it was very interesting. I hope I'm saying this right. Usagi Yojimbo, the Samurai Rabbit comic series is reportedly going to be adapted by Netflix. Very cool. I saw that headline and thought, oh, okay. Oh, and James Wan is attached. Fantastic. So I saw that and immediately went, nice, we'll get an animated uh, adaptation of this rabbit comic with this character so many people love. Literally most of that sentence turned out not to be right. It's not focusing on the main character from the comics. Instead, it's focusing on a descendant of his and setting this in the future. Now, the reason I wanted to point out the beginning here, I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sure maybe there's been something in terms of the history of this comic where there's some basis in them doing this, but it's just confusing for me to like read the premise of the comic. Oh, Samurai Rabbit, that's very neat. They're not doing that, they're doing like his descendant in the future. 
all right. Maybe it's cool, maybe it's, I don't know. If, I'd love to hear from some fans in the comments down below what you think of that because it's just kind of like from an outsider looking in kind of a, moment. But James Wan's amazing, so I have a lot of faith in him. I do want to also point out and clarify that the original creator is still involved, so it will be true to his vision in the sense that he is still going to be someone who has influence in the direction it goes. So it should still be quote unquote like true to his vision if that helps you as fans. And on a side note here, I tried to get into Bone. I certainly liked it for a while and enjoyed it for what it is, but just couldn't get through it. It kind of just lost my interest after a while, but I want another kind of absurd comic like that to try on out. Is this a good one to give it a go or do most people just consider this like, all right, but not the best thing ever? Let me know in the comments down below if you're a fan. Now for these next two series, I want to make it very clear that I am covering rumors. And specifically when I cover rumors here on Fantasy News, what I try to do is track down where these rumors came from and let you know the level of validity involved with them. And the first one is one I'm sure you've probably already seen, and that's that Hayden Christensen confirmed for big role in Obi-Wan Kenobi TV show. In fact, this website right here pretty much has that as the headline. Specifically, it says Hayden Christensen has signed on for Kenobi series, and it's a big role slash after all those words. So now if you're like on like the link, this is just like a dot, 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 and you don't see this part because they want to hide this. LRM top shelf rumor. So, you know, it's, it's still a rumor, even though you felt the need to put all those words before you clarified that. And if you read into this, there's just a lot of people saying inside sources say. Now I will put out there, I believe Hayden Christensen is probably in talks to make an appearance in the Obi-Wan show. Rarely is there this much buzz and it turns out to be about nothing. In fact, after doing quite a bit of digging, there are confirmed reports of Hayden Christensen talking to Disney. So he is at least definitely in conversations with them. Whether or not it's for the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, that's likely, but nothing has been confirmed yet. Just wanna put that out there because I don't want people to be super let down if this turns out to be like, oh, Hayden Christensen instead's going to be I don't know, like in his own show, which would make no sense. It's most likely he's going to be involved with the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Do I think he'll actually play a big role? I doubt it. So this one, I'm gonna start rating rumors on a scale of believability. I'd say seven out of 10, I'd say this is likely. We've seen two headlines pop up saying that there's going to be a live action Samurai Jack show that is confirmed to be in the works by HBO Max. There does seem to be some credibility to a lot of the claims they are making. They're coming from inside sources that have been right before, apparently. My problem here though is why in the world would you make it a live action Samurai Jack show? One of the big appeals to me for Samurai Jack, in fact, maybe the biggest appeal, is the over the top, crazy, awesome animation style, as well as the voice work. And making that live action is one of the few properties that just makes very little sense to go live action with. I don't know about believability here. I'll give it a five out of 10. It could go either way, but if it's true, it's live action. I'm also, as a Samurai Jack fan, very hesitant to say that that's a good call. But now transitioning out of rumors, we have it confirmed that Tom Holland's Uncharted uh, adaptation is going ahead in its production. Still a little bit confused on Tom Holland being Nathan Drake, assuming they're just gonna make him like a younger version who grows into the Nathan Drake we know so well, assuming this franchise does well enough to actually justify more movies. That's all just way in the future. We're gonna have to wait and judge Tom Holland's performance off of this first one. Though I will put out there, I've watched now some of Tom Holland's work outside the MCU. He's a really talented actor. Like Spider-Man's not the most demanding role acting wise, but in some other stuff he's done, Tom Holland Holland is a heck of a performer, so I'm open to see what his interpretation of Nathan Drake's going to be. It's still confusing casting, but it could work out. And in the final piece of sci-fi news we're gonna be covering here today, the upcoming highly anticipated Christopher Nolan's Tenet has been delayed indefinitely. Correction, they actually said they'll have a new release date pretty soon. They're just waiting for this pandemic to be over so its release can happen. Christopher Nolan has specifically said this movie will be in theaters. For this release, we now just have to wait for theaters to be ready to fully occupy and justify the release of Tenet, which needs to make a crap ton of money to earn its 
uh, budget back. So it definitely makes sense to delay this, but I just, um, ah, man, so many delays, so frustrating. Oh, and in semi-related delay news, uh, we are now getting a Comic-Con panel for the upcoming New Mutants movie, and I'm hoping there we'll have some news of a release, because, man, I've been looking forward to that movie for a long time. We'll have Josh Boone involved, we'll have some of the cast as well. The theater shutdown continues, of course, to be a very big deal in the entertainment industry as a indirect result of, you know, the thing. But this has been your latest episode of Fantasy News. I know there was no like gargantuan Sanderson announcements and a lot of people want those for Fantasy News, but I like it when I can just bring you some of the smaller stories that are just kind of like flying under a lot of people's radar, like N.K. Jimson uh, having all of her stuff bought up. That's amazing to me. Uh, Keanu Reeves comic book. That looked phenomenal. If there had been a bunch of Sanderson stuff, I'd have to like weigh whether or not I'd keep that story. And also, of course, that Black Sun. Really looking forward to that. Well, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And do you like the new lens, the new look? It's 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 a, it's definitely more uh, professional looking in my opinion. And also, I'm sorry to keep adding things in here at the end. Check out the podcast my friend Bobby and I have started in the links down below. We have a episode up talking about one horror film, and we've already recorded the next episode where we'll be discussing Back to the Future, which should drop next Monday. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. And of course. I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreons, Honda Sumner and Bewitched Fencer. Hope you guys are having a good one, because I am right on over here.